What's up my soldiers, this is Bob Leon. It's time to talk to you guys about the structure of the Air Force and Chain of Commands. Now this is probably going to sound like a really boring video, but it's actually pretty interesting and it's actually things that you're going to have to learn at BMT. So you might as well learn them now, right? This is my whiteboard. I bought it so I could be more organized in 2016 and things like that. And also to teach you all about Chain of Command. So I'm going to make this as interesting as possible with some pictures and stuff. So what is a Chain of Command? A Chain of Command is a way to disseminate information from the people on top all the way down to the bottom. So obviously, you know, our military is commanded by our president, our acting president, and he or she, if there's a woman, woman in the future, gives orders, but they're not gonna just give orders to everyone. They give orders to like five or six people who then give orders to like 50 people who then give orders to thousands of people. And it works the way down all the way from there. A chain of command keeps things nice and neat and organized and also holds people accountable for their actions and it holds people um, to responsibility and things like that. So at the bottom of the chain of command is the airman. So I'm going to draw me. This is how I draw myself. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's me. Chain of command. I'm down at the bottom. We're the airman. So airmen, there are usually about 20, well depending on where you are and what shop you have. There'll be lots of airmen. That's how it's built up. So you have airmen on both sides here. How do we get our orders? On a day-to-day -day basis, when we come into work, how do we know what we're doing? How do we know what's the goal, what's the plan? We have sergeants and senior airmen um, who basically give us orders and basically just guide us along the way and kind of just give us simple orders like, hey, we're going to get this inspection done today. Cool. Great. Senior airmen, staff sergeants, on top of them is usually what's called a shift lead. Now in the maintenance world, we have shift leads. I'm not sure what they call them in other AFSCs. Usually, there's about three. So you have day shift, swing shift, and mid shift. So this is one shift. And we have one shift with airmen, senior airmen, staff sergeants, and the tech sergeant. So going from here, we have shift leads. There's usually three. So shift leads, top of the shift leads is what's called a flight chief. I'm not sorry, not a flight chief, a shop chief. We'll get to the uh, flight chief in a second. So we have flight chiefs. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep saying that, shop chiefs. So the shop chiefs are in charge of their shop. So the entire AFSC, say egress, that's my job. This is all the people who do my job. We work under one person, our shop chief. And then each shift lead has their own group of sergeants and airmen. So who does the shop chief report to? The shop chief reports to what's called a flight commander. Now this isn't just for maintenance, everybody has a flight commander. A flight commander is typically a, a second lieutenant or a first lieutenant. Shop chiefs are typically master sergeants. Now this whole group here, this is what's called an element or a shop. A flight consists of two or more shops or elements. So the flight commander also gets reported to from other shops. So say we'll have fuels over here, and we'll have hydro over here. Their shop chiefs report to the flight commander. After the flight commander, the flight commander reports to what's called the squadron commander and the operations commander. So here we have the squadron commander, and then under the squadron commander is the OPSO, and then under the OPSO we have a first sergeant and the flight commander. Uh, and then under the flight commander, are all the flights, you know, there will be multiple different flights that all report to the flight commander. And the first sergeant is kind of on the side. Now, first sergeant is someone who you go to if you have any issues with money or any problems outside of work and things like that. A first sergeant is someone who is a master sergeant and they're designated to be a person in your flight who you can come to with your problems. That's essentially what the first sergeant does. I just realized I spelled squad wrong. I forgot the A. Okay, squad commander, opso, flight commander, and then you have all the flights. So now you're like way down here already. You can already tell, like you're buried underneath rank and structure. Squadron commanders are usually majors. I'm gonna try to draw an oak leaf cluster here. Usually majors or lieutenant colonels, which are colored in black. And then the opsos are the same. They're usually the lieutenant colonels or majors. First sergeants are always master sergeants or above. Now the squadron commander's responsibility is basically just to overlook everything in the squadron. If you're a maintenance squadron, then he's going to make sure all the maintenance is done on time. If you're a medical squadron, it's going to make sure everything is being, I don't know, run the way a uh, medical squadron is supposed to be run. Now this wraps up a squadron. Now a squadron can be 5th MXS or you know CES squadron, a security forces squadron, 
Um, you can be a F FSS squadron, which is, you know, services. Whatever your squadron is, it's designated to serve a certain purpose. The squadron commander just makes sure whatever your purpose is, it gets done. And the number just designates what squadron you are. So there's a fifth maiden squadron, there's a third maiden squadron. It just depends on what base you're at. Next is the group commander. The group commander is in charge of two or more squadrons. So a group consists of two or more squadrons. The group commander, essentially the same thing as, as the squadron commander does, but at a bigger level. Now, typically you won't see a group commander that often. You'll see your squadron commander the most. Group commanders only come out during like big events. Like it's something serious if you see a group commander. Out of all your commanders, you're going to see a squadron commander the most. You might see a group commander, you know, three or four times a year at like big squadron events and when everybody gets together at picnics and stuff like that. But the one person who you will only see probably once or twice a year, this is what's called a wing commander. Your wing commander is in charge of basically your entire base. A wing commander is in charge of two or more groups. So you have at least two. Um, and then you have, sometimes you'll have multiple wing commanders. So you'll have two wing commanders who are in charge of two different things. After the wing commander is when it starts getting to the point where it's not really relevant to your day-to-day -day life at all. Before I move to the next step though, I want to mention what's called an IG, an inspector general. The inspector general is basically detached from your chain of command. So you have your chain of command here, and then your IG just sits alone. Like he or she doesn't have anything to do with any part of the chain of command. He or she has authority over everyone. So he has just as much authority over me as an airman as he does over my wing commander. This is just to make sure that people don't just do whatever the heck they want and just pull the rank on people because they think they can. I forgot to mention command chiefs. You have command chiefs in your squadron and they're basically in charge of all the enlisted personnel in your squadron. Every base has a certain purpose, a certain mission, a certain goal. And the wing commanders make sure that that goal is met at all levels. The wing, commander, uh, the wing commanders report to what's called a NAF, a numbered air force. This person is typically a major general or a lieutenant general. Um, you'll never meet this person in your life, most likely. So, for example, when you go to BMT, you'll be under the numbered Air Force of AETC, which is Air Education and Training Command. AETC's purpose is to train and educate airmen. So, naturally, when you're at BMT, you're being trained and educated and also recruited, and that's, that falls under AETC. That's the mission of that numbered Air Force. Now, there are 24 different numbered Air Forces. Each numbered Air Force has its own mission, and each one is broken up into different groups. Now there are 24 different numbered air forces. Each numbered air force is put into a certain category and they all report to a different, uh, kind of like a char characterization. So there's 10 different what's called mage comms. A mage comm breaks up uh, NAFs into different categories due to their either geological location or their certain purpose. So here's the air force essentially. <laughs> And then on top of that, we have the Secretary of the Air Force. And then on top of the Secretary of the Air Force, hold on. So everything I just showed you is basically like the Air Force as a whole. And then we have the people who are just generally in charge of the Air Force. So we have the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, who is in charge of all enlisted personnel, period, dot. Then we have the uh, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, then we have the Secretary of the Air Force. Oh, there goes my pink hat. Tech hat. And then on top of that, we have the Secretary of Defense. And somewhere in here is the Joint Chief of Staffs. So I'm not really sure. And then the uh, VP, Vice President. And then essentially the President. Yeah, the Joint Chief of Staffs, which are individually in charge of each branch of the military, those go like right here between the Secretary of the Air Force and the Secretary of Defense. So, yeah, that's how the Air Force works. You are all the way down at the bottom, you know, and then we got all these people at the top. Hopefully it wasn't too hard to see around my gigantic head, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment box below. If you have any suggestions, leave them down there as well. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.